Hey, welcome in. I'm Mackenzie and my adventure partner, Tony, is around here somewhere. Hi. Welcome to our studio. I'm gonna give you a quick tour today. Um, we're just in the middle of working on some books and illustrations and art, uh, but I wanted to let you know something before we get started. This isn't our everyday studio. Tony and I actually just got married and we are on our honeymoon in the desert in Utah. And actually we're both used to doing a lot of mobile art and working remotely. And so we figured we'd give you a, a tour of our honeymoon studio today. So I want to take a seat and yay! I knew it was around here somewhere. Welcome. So our guest just got here and we're going to oh. do a tour of the studio. Awesome. Welcome. Yeah, this is us. Not usually, but uh, here we are in a wonderful little honeymoon residence, and uh, we're gonna be making some books. Yeah. You ready? I'm always ready. Yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> um, well, we're kind of in the middle of doing art right now, um, but usually we have to get started, so we figured we'd start by telling you how we usually get started. Hello, so I'm here today to share with you kind of part of my process and how I work and a huge part of that is how I get started. So I usually try to find a wide open space, clear my thoughts, clear my desk, um, and then I'm going to share some of the things that I always have with me, um, if at all possible, when I'm working. First, I usually grab my laptop or my phone. Um, I love to look up visual reference. I am also an obsessive note taker kind of doodler and I feel a little bit of less pressure with lined paper. Um, so I have that and some pens at just easy to reach and I am left-handed. So I always keep that on my left side. Um, something else that I love to have handy when I'm thinking about illustrating is Tony and I have these handy dandy templates of layouts we use um, and we'll do thumbnails and thumbnails are simplified smaller versions of the illustrations we're going to do um, but this can be really really wonderful for me to stay focused on the overall like is the overall image successful and what's the simplest version of that so love to have those with me as well. I also love to listen to podcasts while I work and Tony likes a little more silence or different music. So always have my earbuds. I then will also use scratch paper. And um, you'll see this has some stains on it. Here's a sketch of a previous character, but Tony and I are very into using what we've got. Um, I almost never work without an iced tea. It's my favorite drink in the whole world and it is so good. And um, finally, kind of all I need is a pencil and I'm ready to begin. Hi, I'm Tony. And just like Mackenzie, I also love having a clean, open workspace. And before I get started, you know, I gather all the things that I need. Number one on my list, is un cafecito, so. And even though I do most of my work on the computer for the final illustrations, I have to have paper and pencil in order to kind of generate ideas. And so I take this trusty little pencil bag with all its pens and pencils, and I get my paper, and I start doing drawings like this, and like this, in order to kind of explore ideas. And um, I also like to have a computer close by so that I can look up reference or look up other ideas and compare like work that I've done before. Um, and that's pretty much all I need to kind of start working on picture book work. You ready to work? I think so. Are you ready to work? Heck yeah. Yeah. As you can see, it takes a lot of work to make a picture book. And now what we'd like to do is show you what it takes just to make one illustration in a picture book. Great idea. 
Let's take this final illustration from our new book, One Tiny Tree Frog, and walk through the steps. To make one illustration, usually we start with reference. This can be as simple as going on Google and Googling what you want to draw, taking a walk, looking at the world around you, and just getting some ideas before you even start sketching. Once your head's full of all these ideas and reference, it's time to pull out the paper and pencil and start sketching, like this sketch that Mackenzie created. This is an actual scan of the first sketch we did for this spread, and as you can see, it doesn't have to be fancy or perfect. The sketch is all about trying to solve a composition. A composition being the arrangement of elements on a 2D plane, or in more normal words, it's kind of what you would draw and where you would put it on the paper. Once you're happy with that composition, the next thing we start thinking about is color. And color is like music in a movie. It can tell you how to feel, where to look. And to create this color composition, we worked in Photoshop to digitally illustrate, but you could just as easily create this with crayons. So what's the final piece of the puzzle? We use the reference, the sketch, and the color version to get to the final illustration, like a map guiding us. It's about taking this color composition to final, about adding the richness of detail of the natural world into this illustration. And this is where Tony really stands out. His incredible eye for naturalistic detail brings every one of our final illustrations to life. I feel so lucky to work with him, and if you buy our book, you'll see every illustration has his tender, loving care and fingerprints all over it. Thank you, mi amor. Even though the final illustration is the only thing our readers will see, each of the steps that we took to create this image are just as important as the final output. Before you go, please enjoy a sneak peek at and some fun facts about our new book, One Tiny Tree Frog. Hola, I'm Tony. And I'm Mackenzie. And we are the creators of One Tiny Tree Frog. We are so excited and grateful that our tiny embryo of a book will be wiggling into publication with Candlewick so soon. And to get you as excited as we are, we thought we could share a few fun facts about us. First, we actually traveled to Costa Rica to experience firsthand the amazing plants and animals you see in the book. We went on a night hike through the Costa Rican rainforest, whitewater rafted down the Rio Pacuare, and we even met a two-toed sloth in our outdoor shower. Secondly, we're incredibly grateful to be partnering with field scientists and devoted herpetologists, Sina Amini and Suzy Segura. We hope you learn a thing or two, or 10, from our back matter and get inspired to be curious about nature and science like we have been. My favorite fact that we've learned, and actually a huge inspiration for the whole book, is while these embryos look defenseless and delicate clinging to a leaf, they have an incredible survival adaptation that allows them to detect the vibrations in their environment and hatch up to four days early if threatened by a predator like a wasp or a snake. That is so cool. So that's a little bit about us and why we're so excited for One Tiny Tree Frog. But it's not just us. We're I'm excited for a We're so, so excited. excited. I'm so excited. I'm excited it's for One Tiny Tree Frog. We're so excited for One Tiny Tree Frog. We hope you're excited too. Gracias. Y pura vida. Pura vida. I'm so excited for One Tiny Tree Frog.